This is Excel 2016, Module 8, Part 3. So in this particular segment, we're going to be looking at the nested if statement. So the nested if statement is an if statement within another if statement. So let's look at our formatting. This tends to be one of the workbooks that are one of the formulas, excuse me, that I do type in the formula bar. I think it sometimes gets too long and it's challenging to uh, fit all of the information in the box because you can't see it all. So I tend to type this one out, and so this would be one that I would encourage you to focus on the formatting and make sure you get it correctly. Now the first thing you have to do is figure out how many if statements you need to complete this nested if. So for example, we are going to be looking at a nested if that takes, uh, let's see, it's going to look at our data over here in our MBHC workbook, and it's going to be calculating the bonus. And you can see based on these bonus amounts, on the data table worksheet that there are three possible answers. So in order to determine how many if statements you will need, you take the number of possible answers, subtract one, and that is how many if statements you need. So for example, in our case, we have three possible answers subtract one from that, and we would need two if statements. If we were using an if statement to determine the badge color using the data here, you can see that there are five options, so we would subtract one, and we would need four if statements. So that's the first thing you have to do with an if statement, is you have to determine how many. Once you determine how many, then you can begin to lay out the formula. So your, since we have two if statements, you will have two decisions two value if trues, and then one final value if false. Okay, so let's take a look at our example. The first question we're going to ask is, are the years of service greater than or equal to 10. If they are, we're going to give a bonus amount of 500. If they're not, we don't know what the answer is going to be yet because there are still two options. So the second question is going to be, is the years of service greater than or equal to Five. If the answer to that question is yes, we've already eliminated anything greater than 10, so we know the bonus has to be 250. And then once we've eliminated everything that was greater than or equal to 5 and everything greater than or equal to 10, anything left gets a bonus of the false amount, which is 100. 
So let's take a look at creating that formula. So again, here we have our years of service and our bonus amounts. So we're going to go over to our employee data. If your employee data column doesn't or columns do not match this one, that simply means you didn't do some of the earlier um, videos, and that's fine. So just select the first available comma or column next to your table, and we're going to type in a heading of bonus amount. Now, as I said, I like to use the formula bar for this. It gets too long, and when that happens, it becomes challenging because you can't see the entire formula in the boxes. So we're going to go up and we're going to click in the formula bar. And we're going to begin with an equal sign. And then once I type the if, and open a parentheses, you're going to notice that I start seeing screen tips. These screen tips show me what option I'm working on. Right now I'm working on a logical test. And if you pay attention, it shows you the punctuation that you need to complete your if statement. So the first thing we're going to look at is are the years of service greater than or equal to 10? So we're going to put years of service greater than or equal to and the number 10. Notice logical test is still what's highlighted. So that's still what I'm working on, and it shows me that the comma needs to follow it. So once I add that comma, it highlights the next field. It says, okay, you are working on the value if true now. So if the years of service is greater than or equal to 10, I'm going to go over to the data tables and I'm going to select B19. Now again, because I do not want this cell reference to move, I need to make this absolute by adding the dollar signs. You can also use the F4 key to accomplish that. Again, it shows me I need another comma to separate the value if true if or to move to the value if false and you notice that your highlight moved from the value if true to now you are working on the value if false but you will remember there's still two more options so we don't have an answer. We have to ask another if statement. So now we're going to type if, and we're going to open the parentheses. Notice it tells us now we're back working on that logical test. So we're going to go back to the employee data, and we're going to choose years of service and this time we're going to say greater than or equal to 5. When we do the comma, it is going to tell us now we're working on the value if true. So we're going to go back to our data tables and we're going to click on B18. Again, we need to make that an absolute reference. either typing in the dollar signs or using the F4 key. Now that I'm done with the value if true, I'm going to separate with a comma. The highlight shifted to the value if false. 
This time, there's only one answer left. And so I know that that is my value of false, B17. And again, that must be absolute referenced. Now when you finish the entire nested if statement, you want to count the number of if statements you used. If you used 12, then you need 12 closing parentheses all at the end. If you use 5, you will have 5. Since we used 2, you're going to have 2 closing parentheses. And notice Excel color codes those closing and opening parentheses so you can see that you have matched them all up. So now we're going to hit enter and it fills in a bonus amount for each employee that we have based on their years of service. So again, if we look at a nested if, you're going to have one logical test and value if true for each if statement. You're going to have one value if false at the very end of the statement. If you count the possible number of answers, and subtract one, that will tell you how many if statements you need to solve the equation. You must have a value if false. If you get done and you don't have something to put in the value if false, you have probably used too many if statements. And the final thing to remember is there are no closing parentheses in the middle of the formula. They all go at the end, and you need one for every if statement.